So, I know it's been an incredibly long while since last I've made a video on gothic literature, but I've just had a lot of other things I've wanted to focus on in regard to my channel. I've also had issues with getting in the right headspace to actually sit down, read, and focus because of my ADHD. I did, however, inadvertently discover that if I have some kind of non-chaotic background noise, such as Candy playing video games, or me listening to a podcast, or me listening to music, I have a much better time of focusing on visual stimuli, so that really helps me focus on what I'm reading. It's really difficult for me to focus on anything visual unless I have some form of auditory stimuli that is not chaotic. Chaotic noise, however, will freak me out and give me a panic attack. Anyway, so I thought I'd ease back into classic and gothic literature with a... <laughs> 600 page novel from the 19th century. Yeah, I know. I'm crazy. But I'm glad I picked it out from the classic section at our local library here on the island. I wanted to read this in particular before diving in to a modern gothic novel that was kindly sent to me by another aspiring author. I needed to get in the mood for gothic literature again. What did I pick up? Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. I am familiar with Henry James by reputation, but I had not yet read anything by him. Most famously, Turn of the Screw, which is another gothic novel. From the description of this book from the back cover, I was expecting it to be more in the vein of gothic fiction, but I still enjoyed the story and it was still pretty dark. Portrait of a Lady tells the story of a young woman in her mid-twenties by the name of Isabel Archer. She is an American girl recently orphaned by the death of her father. I actually was pleasantly surprised by our heroine in this story, but I'll get into that later. She receives a wonderful opportunity from her maternal aunt Lydia Touchette, who comes to visit her. I mean, who would turn down seeing the world? Going to stay with her aunt and her husband's luxurious estate of Garden Court in England, then proceeding to explore France and Italy? I know I wouldn't turn that down. Sign me up, baby. Upon arriving at Garden Court, she charms her aunt's ailing husband, Daniel Touchette, and attracts the interest of her newly acquainted cousin, the frail and invalid Ralph Touchette, as well as the Touchette's neighbor, Lord Warburton, a nobleman living a stone's throw away in his estate of Lockley. Lord Warburton is absolutely enthralled by Isabel's perspectives on life, her intelligence, and her beauty. He admits that he feels a bit intimidated by her intelligence, but not necessarily in a bad way. He enjoys it and he is very much impressed by it. Ralph, however, is a different story. He's definitely daunted by her intelligence, but instead of accepting it and finding it enthralling, he feels threatened by it and typically reacts to it in a very passive-aggressive manner. Not cool, dude. Lord Warburton finally works up the courage to propose to Isabel, even though he would be a smart match, at least socially, and the fact that he seems to be sincerely in love with her and wishes her nothing but the best, she turns him down. Yeah. Despite the odyssey across the pond and across Europe, Isabel's past follows her. An old suitor from America, Caspar Goodwood, pursues her to ask her hand in marriage. He's the heir of a wealthy mill owner, and he and Isabel once had a relationship that ended very badly. But we are kind of foggy on the details of what transpired. I really hate this guy. <sighs> I'll get into that in a little bit. Naturally, because this guy is a creepy stalker piece of shit, Isabel turns him down. Following the death of Daniel Touchette, Isabel inherits an enormous fortune, which was made possible by a request that Ralph made to his father on his deathbed. And she then proceeds to make plans with her aunt and cousin to travel to France and Italy. While making their plans, a friend of the family, Madame Merle, pays her respects and assists them with their plans, befriending Isabel in the process. 
Through her travels in Europe, Isabel meets an intriguing gentleman named Gilbert Osmond, an American-born worldly man who settled in Italy, who was also an acquaintance of Madame Merle and a collector of beautiful things. He also has an adolescent daughter named Pansy, who immediately takes a liking to Isabel. Osmond adds another piece to his collection. Two years later, Isabel and Osmond are married, but things turn sour. Her new husband robs Isabel of the one thing that she wanted to protect, her freedom. Her independence and free spirit were the reasons that she turned down Lord Warburton's proposal and why she continually refused Caspar Goodwood. Yet she submitted to this man who charmed her and allowed him to usurp what she valued most. She becomes isolated from her friends and suffers under her husband's repressive presence and controlling nature yet is too proud to admit that she fucked up. Things unfold from there, and not for the better. I'll let you guys find out. So, I really enjoyed this story, like, a lot. <laughs> Even though it doesn't necessarily fall into the vein of gothic literature, gothic fiction, what have you, it does kind of have echoes and allusions to it. So you can tell through the occurrences that something super shady is going on. It bugs you. This story reads a lot like a very long Jane Austen novel, but there's this really tense and oppressive atmosphere throughout the plot. It's nerve-wracking, and until you reach the last 100 to 200 pages, you can't really ascertain or articulate what the cause of that distress is that you're feeling. It's really crazy. You just know something's wrong. I feel like a lot less time could have been devoted to describing the character's introspective feelings for several pages at a time. <sighs> depending on the parts of the plot. Yeah, I kind of knew what I was getting into with a 600-page novel from the 19th century, but what can you do? Let's talk a bit about the characters. Our heroine, Isabel Archer, like I said before, was a pleasant surprise. Even though she has suffered through tragedy in her life, she still has a rather bright outlook on the world. She's enthusiastic and she's adventurous. Not only that, she is also incredibly intelligent, has good taste, and she is so well read. I geeked out when Henry James dropped the name of Charles Gounod among her musical tastes. What really fascinated me about her is that she low-key seems to be playing mind games on Ralph and Lord Warburton, and that she intimidates them with her intelligence and yet charms them with her kindness. One part that really made me say, okay, I really dig her, was when she was asking Ralph about whether or not Garden Court was haunted, and how excited she was by the possibility of seeing a ghost in its ancient halls. I could relate to her so much on that level of being fascinated by spooky things, guys being intimidated by her intelligence, I could relate to her on that. She's like a smarter Catherine Moreland in Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. Besides Isabel, my favorite character in here was Lord Warburton. If I were her, I totally would have gone for him because he seemed to be so sincerely in love with her, and I was impressed by the fact that even though he was intimidated by her intelligence, it didn't put him off or turn him off in any way. What showed me what a great guy he was, just wait for it. Even at the point where he works up the nerve to actually propose marriage to Isabel, instead of carrying on about it and acting like an entitled rich douche when she rejects him, he accepts her wishes and will not press the matter any further throughout the story out of respect for her. He would have given her the world, but she still turned him down. He accepted the fact that she rejected his proposal because she desired freedom so much even if he didn't quite understand it. He was so sweet, so attentive, so sincere, and not the asshole I was anticipating him to be due to his title and fortune. Even when he was presented with another chance to court another eligible debutante later on in the story, he turned it away because she too was in love with another prospect. He's a good guy. <laughs> I really like him. Ralph just seemed to be bitter about Isabel's interaction not only with him, but Isabel's interactions with Lord Warburton. As I said before, it's clear that he's intimidated by her intelligence, but he responds in an incredibly passive-aggressive manner to her wit. It was kind of hard to articulate what exactly his deal was, but that's just how I felt about him. Fucking Caspar Goodwood. I just wanted to punch him in the balls. He's obsessive, controlling, manipulative, and he just won't give up and doesn't get the concept of no means no. Nope. Just give up, dude. Come on. 
He even uses Isabelle's friend to lead him to her. Not cool. The thing he said that I really hated the most was, and I quote, I'd rather see you dead than married to another man. I'm not cool with that. Not at all. <laughs> Gilbert Osmond, another dick, but he comes with an extremely charming facade, unlike Caspar Goodwood. He was also extremely manipulative, and he had the added benefit of a teenage daughter and a collection of finery to make him seem more upstanding and trustworthy. Again, what sucks the most is when he manipulates Isabel, so much so that she loses her most valuable trait of all. She, after all she's been through and still having a strong will and free spirit in spite of it all, was taken in by this conspiring fiend. Overall, I really liked this book. Even though it had very vaguely gothic overtones, yet wasn't quite gothic, I still think it's definitely worth reading if you are a fan of Henry James or of Northanger Abbey or of gothic literature in general. It will definitely drag on, carrying on about things tangentially related to the plot, but don't really contribute much to the plot. If you have trouble getting through books that are, let's say, long and tedious, check out the link in the description below from Ready to Glare's channel for advice on how to get through things like that. I found it extremely helpful. I will also leave a link for the book in the description as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you sticking with me and I do apologize for how long it indeed has been since last I've made a video reviewing gothic literature, but I'm back now and I'm diving into a brand new story very soon. I'm really excited to read it and I'm really excited to share it with you guys once I'm done reading it. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you guys later. Bye.